Hello, hello, friends. Um, I am setting a timer so that I don't talk forever in a day because I'm really excited about this, um, this digital archive that I found and that I'm going to be sharing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that we're not looking at me any longer than is necessary. So I'm going to show you where I started finding um, in finding this archive because I really didn't know where to start. I knew that I wanted something applicable um, to the time, something that could really feed into, I think, what people are researching and wanting to educate themselves on right now. So what comes to mind is um, Black History Month in February, Women's History Month in March. That's a perfect intersection of something that I'd be interested in finding right now. So I started at the uh, New York Public Library Digital Collections. Um, they've got almost a million items digitized, which is just insane. Um, but I didn't really find anything that was sticking out to me. There's a couple things, a couple things, um, but nothing specific. So then I saw this and I'm immediately drawn to this women's suffrage is what it looks like. Um, so I go there. So that takes me to the Digital Public Library of America. So I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer to what I want. Um, so Miss, uh, Miss Bass looks like someone that I would be interested in researching. So I wanted to browse her collection. Um, however, I went to the about page and I just kind of explored here because I wanted to understand what is this branch of the Digital Public Library of America. It is the Black Women's Suffrage. Um, this is a branch that focuses specifically on that area. Um, and I also think that this whole website is very visually appealing. I think that it's, um, it's very user friendly. I really like, I liked exploring on it. Um, so it, it tells why they're doing what they're doing, why we even need this sort of collection. And then we also have credits for everybody because um, I think it's important to give credit where credit is due for this work. Um, so then I had to pick who am I going to look at for this digital archive. Heads up, I looked at everybody, but for these purposes, I went with Miss Ida B. Wells. So, I chose her because about a year ago in a history class I took, I, um, I listened to a podcast about her and this was the first time that I'd heard about her, which blew my mind because she's such an important figure in, in American history and women's history and black history. She's such a, a critical part of the intersection of all of these histories. Um, so I was very excited to find this digital archive dedicated to her. So in each archive, each collection, we're gonna have the, um, a little blurb about who this is. Um, the collection itself is extensive to say the least. This is probably everything that you could ever wanna know about Miss Wells. Um, and it's organized very well to me. It's got, you know, the dates and um, I think that's helpful. And just the extent this one specifically, the extent to which they've gone to make sure that these pieces are preserved and um, accessible to the public is wild to me. On that note, this is a completely public, completely free resource. Anybody can access this. There's no paywall. You don't need a login, nothing. Anybody can look at these. Um, and I also appreciate that it has a, um, some uh, transcription on the side um, with a little bit of context. And you can zoom in on this. You can, I mean, you can see the creases in the paper. We live in wild times, y'all. You could print this out if you wanted to. You could download it, you could save it. If you're doing research on this, on this, um, on this site, you could, you could save everything that you wanted to. I just think that's so cool. Another cool thing is, um, yeah, just the handwritten aspect is so wild to me. Again, just the, the extent to which things are preserved. Um, and especially, I think it's incredible to have these things preserved in person, but then to have access for anybody to go look at these is absolutely incredible. It blows my mind. 
I could spend 10 minutes just just gushing over these things. So who would find this useful? I'm tempted to say everybody, <laughs> but that may not be realistic. Um, I think that this is, this is something that needs to be, these collections need to be looked at now because I think that we need to start viewing um, individuals from this time and influential people um, figures, influential women of history, influential black women of history, we need to start viewing them in an individual light. And so I appreciate that this is not just an archive of, um, of the suffrage of all black women. It is the suffrage of, it, it shows them at a, a human level. And I really appreciate that. Um, because I think when we say black history, it encompasses so much that it's almost overwhelming. And especially if you don't know anything, if you're white and you're just learning, I think it can be very overwhelming. And so I think it's really cool to just um, say like, I'm gonna hone in on Ida B. Wells right now. And that's really where I'm gonna educate myself. And I'm gonna learn about her life and what she went through. She was born into slavery. Um, I think that this site specifically offers a really cool opportunity. Um, when I was looking at the Digital Public Library of America, the New York Public Library, they have a lot of collections that are um, categorized as like a subject. And so that's that to me is a way that this stands out is this is a person, this is one person. Um, and they have, you know, you can do that for multiple people. They do have primary sources, but um, I just think that's really helpful. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Yeah, no paywall who might benefit. Yeah. So I'm going to quit talking because I've already talked for seven minutes. Thank you for watching and please go explore this. It's so, so cool. Now I just stop recording. <laughs>